Hi, welcome to the portrait chapter. In this chapter, I teach you how to utilize the LLSA formula to take great portraits. In order to take great portraits, there are three things you should know. Number one is composition. Number two, it's framing and layering. And number three, it's the action or non-action that your person or group is doing within the image that you're taking. Composition. The rule of thirds states that whatever is in the center or whatever is in the four intersection points, those are the most important parts of the image. Why is it important? Because those are the parts that the viewer looks at first. Knowing this fact, now when you're composing your shots, you have to make sure that how you position your model or, or subject, that they have to be in one of those sectors. When taking a portrait, the thing that always is the main connection point between the viewer and the photo that you've shared, it's the eyes. Photographing people, we like to look at other people. <laughs> Meaning that when we look at photos of other people, we tend to look at the eyes first. We're looking for the eyes. And it's really important that you know this because how you frame your model or your group, you have to make sure that at least some of the eyes are visible and makes that connection point. Now, where do you put the eyes at? Well, there are a couple of areas we can put the eyes. You can put the eyes right on the intersection point, one of the intersection points, or right on top of the line, line the top line, you can actually put the eyes right there on the line. So that way, right there itself, you have a good composition. Layering and framing. In this photo right here, you see that I have two models and then I have the leaf right on the right side. And you notice that my intersection point, I only have one intersection point that's on the eye of the model. Why is that? Why don't I have all the intersection points hit on someone's eye? Well, the thing is, if knowing the fact that the eye is a connection point between the viewer and the photo, that I, don't, I only have to decide to choose one of the intersection points for the eye to land on, because the rest is gonna be pretty balanced. So let's, let's, look at this further, let's look at this image a little further. When you look at this image right now, there are a couple of things that I want you to notice. I want you to notice how well it's balanced. And based on the color that is also being displayed. So right now, right, I have the green leaf right here. And this leaf is darker than the skin tone of the two models. It's also lighter than the background. Even though it's darker than the models, but lighter than the background, guess what that does? It makes the model stand out, and it also makes this one leaf stand out. And so what do I get? I get layers within the image. So the question is, what, what is layers? And how do I determine what layers to use and what layers not to use? And this concept is called foreground, middle ground, background. So let's go to another photo for a second. In this photo, I have a woman right in the middle of the street. So, and you can tell that I placed her right in the middle of the photo. So my framing is right apart because when you're looking at it, you tend to focus on her, but you also tend to focus on the background right here. Now let's talk about foreground. So what's in the foreground? The foreground is, what is the nearest thing from the camera to the image. So the nearest thing next to the camera is her. She's standing right there. She's the closest thing to the camera. And then what's the middle ground? The middle ground is whatever is the next furthest thing from the camera. And that would be the street sign. Well, it's the street and the lights right here. And then our background, our background is the furthest thing from the camera. And that is the building and the sky here. I always get asked, what about the portrait mode? Can't I just use that to take good portraits? The answer is yes and no. The portrait mode limits your distance between you and your subject. If you're not 
eight feet apart, then your images aren't going to look that great. If you use the photo option on your phone, you're going to be able to see where within your environment your subject is located and get the best composition. Because I want you, the photographer, to have the most control out of the photos that you want to take. Let's look at another image. We all like to take food images. Going out for a, fr a fancy restaurant, going out for a date. Now, how do you take a good, you know, this is where I am experience, hanging out with my friend. And this itself can be also be a portrait as well, because guess what? Look at how I position this person. I, I end up positioning this person right in the middle. And guess what is in my foreground? My foreground is the food right here, the bacon, salmon. And then my middle ground is the model, is her, her happy smile. And we talked about the connection point, which are their eyes when taking photos of people. Then the background is the plates hanging in the back. I want to talk about the LLSA formula for a sec. So we have location, light, subject, angle. In this image here, what's my location? I've decided that based on where she was eating food, this is where I'll photograph because I like the background and like the color of the wall next to her. Where's my light source? My light source is coming from the window, so it's coming from my right side. And guess what? Since she's so close to the window and light's coming from there, she's automatically wall lit. Number three, the action or non-action that's being done within the group or a person you're taking a photo of. In this photo right here, what I'm looking at is I took this photo outside and I have two people, one's looking at the camera and the other is looking up. So that's their action and also how their feet is positioned. Now, let's talk about how I end up composing this photo. They're right at the middle of a building. And you see how this lamp right here? If, you, if I start zooming down, they're right below the lamp. And I love this concept of layering that I've set up here. And so when we're talking about the action, and you can also talk about this as poses. When it comes to poses, we have to have lines that show within the body. What do I'm talking about? It's like, if you look at how they're positioning their legs, we have a line right here. We have a line right here, right at the legs, just because of how they have their feet tilted up. There's a lot of different ways you can compose your photo when it comes to portraits. You can have it be a full body portrait or half a portrait, or you can even have the portrait be like a headshot where it goes from shoulders and up, or it can go from waist and up. So there's a lot of ways that you can play around with how you can take the portrait. Within portrait photography, there's a lot of different poses that you can do. You don't have to be stuck just putting your hands down here or looking from the camera looking at or looking directly directly at the camera. You're not a prom anymore, so you don't have to can stop taking prom photos. <laughs> so a couple of the common poses that I like to do with my, my models is, here's one of them, them crossing their legs and looking directly at the camera right in the middle and while sitting. The other shot that I like to do is a person looking away from the camera so that way I can get a profile shot of them. I have three poses that works on anybody. If you are sitting nice and still, put your weight on one of your leg, and then as you do this, you see you get this rocking motion. And instead of holding, like being stiff and holding it like this, or whatever people tend to do, just kind of rock a little bit, just rock. And as you rock, you can take your right shoulder and almost like turn towards the camera and you can like pause and kind of tilt your head up and look directly at the camera and that's a good shot right there. Another common pose that I do is when a person's sitting down, them crossing their legs and looking directly at the camera. And one of my all-time favorite pose is the wall pose. So 
being that the person either leans against the wall or that they are having their back against the wall in a way that doesn't seem awkward. You don't want your model to be awkward. You don't want the person you're taking a photo of to be awkward. Now that you have examples of the poses, it's really important to switch up the angles. We talk a lot about the foreground and middle ground and background. So if you switch up your angles, you're gonna have different foreground, middle ground, and background. Like what are you showing more of? And then the relationship with that, with your model, it's gonna look very, very different every time you switch up your angle. So don't be afraid to experiment and please, please, please take more photos left and right instead of taking it straight on. When it comes to group photography, make sure that you have people doing different things. You can have a person with their back looking one direction while you can have the other person looking directly at the camera or you can even have the other person kneeling or bending down. Changing it up the layers is gonna help you take better group photos. When you're photographing people, make sure you ask them two things. Number one is, what is your good side? What is your best side? That question is going to allow you to get a better understanding of which side the person likes to be photographed on. And that also allows you as the photographer to take really good photos of that individual. And the second thing is to let the person know when you're taking a photo of them. So you say, hey, are you ready? That's the, that's the second question. When they say yes, you do a countdown. You say three, two, one, you snap the photo. A lot of time when people are taking photos, they just take photos. They never tell you when they're taking a photo. So don't be that person. Let me show you live examples of me utilizing what we just talked about in a live photo shoot. We are underneath a bridge. I'm tapping on my screen to tell the camera where I want to focus and I start adjusting the amount of light that's coming into the lens and I take a photo. I'm going to step a little closer because I want to have a different composition here. Now you realize that I'm putting her on the right side and I'm going to follow, I'm going to follow the tip of putting one of her eye in the intersection point. I'm gonna start adjusting the brightness because I want the light coming in that's hitting her face. I want it to be directly at her face, but not too much where she's glowing. I'm gonna flip my camera around because I want to get this concept of foreground, middle ground, background. My foreground is now at the ground and it's huge. And now she's right in the middle and then my background is the bottom of the bridge. I'm gonna to move to my left because the train on the right side was taking a little bit more of space and I don't want it to be seen on my photo. I'm gonna tap on the screen exactly where I want the lens to focus on. I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna start adjusting the brightness, knowing that the light source is hitting right in her face and I love this shot. I'm making a conscious decision of which body parts I am including within each photo that I take of her. Ha <laughs> ha